Hello, I'm Dr. Megan Garvin. I'm the Associate Director of Research and Evaluation for the Maryland Center for Computing Education. We are located in the University System of Maryland P20 office and work with all of our school systems across our state, as well as all of our teacher preparation higher education programs. So the SCRIP process is what we're gonna talk about briefly today so that you become familiar with it. SCRIP stands for Strategic CS for All Resource and Implementation Planning Tool. This tool and the development of this tool began back in 2010 when in New York City schools, they realized that there were only some select students who were taking computer science. They wanted to increase the diversity, equity, and inclusion to have all students be able to have computer science. They continued to work and develop on this tool till today, and now it is used not only in our state in Maryland, but many other states and across international countries as well. So why is this process needed? We are aware that one size does not fit all for each school or school system. This framework is to allow you to take a look at where you are, to assess where you are, where are the pain points and things that you need to try to resolve in order for CS to be brought to all of our students. Then you can set priorities and goals. We realize that early on, there are teachers who go through professional development, such as Excite2, and become early adopters, and then are able to have high quality computer science courses going to select students who take that particular course or in their sections. We know that we need to do more to do landscaping and planning in order to have more of our teachers be able to deliver these types of courses and have ongoing collaboration between stakeholders. The script rubric composes of many different subcategories. So we have materials in curriculum, in this case it would be Excite2, leadership, partners and community, and teacher capacity and development. And this is the critical piece of professional development the teachers will go through in the summer and then have ongoing support throughout the school year. This is an example of materials and curriculum and the subcomponents within that domain, looking at the different kinds of curriculum, what kinds of articulation, if you're looking at the system level, if you're looking at the school level, just what kinds of sections and how many sections you're able to have for those students and so forth. Then you'll set goals, short-term and long-term goals in these categories in order to really think through and have the stakeholders in your school and school system be able to come together and figure out how to deliver computer science for all. What we do is we do monitor our data here in Maryland. This is our dashboards that go across our entire state looking at the intersectionality of gender and race and ethnicity. And we monitor this annually. Our data is a bit of a year delay, which is why we're only up to 2022 in this particular uh, area. But we're able to do the same thing at the school level and the school system level in order to really see who's taking these courses and what they're doing. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know.